Right, so continuing the theme of punches, today's little video is a little half round punch. I've put it down as a mouth punch because that's what I used for the dog on my one of my last videos. But I also use it for nostrils on horses, the horse head, um, eyebrows, you can use it for all sorts of things. Decoration around a, bo you know, a board around something, whatever you like. So, I'm going to make it out of another piece of spring steel. I've already uncoiled a bit and got it prepared. It's a bit of half inch, the same as for the last punch. So we're going to get it hot and do exactly the same first procedure as we did on the, the last punch, which is um, taper the hitty end. Just take a reasonable heat and then literally just lift the heat, the back up a little bit and draw a short taper. Now someone said to me on the last video, punch video, why do you taper the end? And I facetiously said, makes it look pretty. But what it's actually for is to stop it doming out too much, mushrooming, um, if you were you know, using it a lot. Um, I don't really need to do it on mine because I don't use them that much, so they're not really going to dome that much. But uh, that's basically the idea, is to just stop it mushrooming quite so badly. There you go. I think that's one heat. And it's done. Quite nicely tapered there. That's plenty. So now, the other end, the business end. I'm just going to do a quite a long square taper. And what you want to do, you want to keep it square. Don't let it go sort of oblong or whatever. Um, and draw it down so that the end profile across the diagonal is approximately the size of the half round that you want to achieve. I actually here have gone a little bit small so I'm going to try and um, just grind it back a little bit because I've got a small one and I, I want to make one slightly bigger so I, I you know I don't need another small one. I want to have lots of different sizes for lots of applications. So once you've done it just stick it on the floor let it cool Once it's cool, up in the vise, on the diagonal. So you've got one of the corners facing up at you. And you want to get a nice sharp rasp or file. I'm using one of my old chewing rasps. And just take that corner off. You want it quite steep, um, no not steep, it's quite shallow, a shallow angle so that you come quite a long way back up the, the punch. Might be able to see it a bit better than there. It's a fair bit of work but it's worth it and you want to get it down so that it's almost to the corners of the diagonal, so that the widest part basically, not quite, but almost there. Once you've done that, you break out the small files. Now I've got, I just use these chainsaw files, I've got a little tiny 532, uh, 316 up to this one and the quarter, and that's the one I'm going to use today, basically because I haven't got anything else at the moment. And what you want to do, if you can get it started, this file's a little bit blunt, so it's not going to start very well on this quite hard material. Although it's been slightly annealed, it's still quite hard. Then you want to make a groove right down the centre. Keep it running right from top to bottom. Now this really isn't the best way of doing it. The best way of doing it is from this end. From the outside in, because then the handle whatever handle you've got doesn't fail at the top. So then you can keep it nice and 
shallow angle and run it right the way up that piece that you've already filed down. See, it's, it's quite a lot of work, but there's no other way around it. So make sure you've got a fairly decent file. I don't know if you can see there, it's difficult to catch it in the light, what I'm trying to achieve. So it's not really deep enough yet. I want to get it a bit deeper into that V, or the V that it's, it's creating. If you can see, still, ah, oh, they are, that's a bit better. There, you can see in the dark bit. So we're almost there, and then the next thing is to take this back edge off. So we'll do that now. Again, get the big file out. And take the back edge off. You don't want to go too far. Keep an eye on it because otherwise you'll be thinning out the business end too much. If you will be able to see there, it's not very easy. Let's zoom out a bit and see if you can see it a bit better. Catch the light. It's not very good lighting here. I think you can see it's what you're trying to achieve is um is the the radius. So now you've got to run your file around the edges now that you've got the middle bit down to the thickness you want and as with the other punch I always tend to go a little bit thicker to start with so you can always take a bit more material off but if you go hairing at it and you take too much off you're knackered you've got to start again so just go gradually Again, I don't know, you can just about see it starting to round it off. What I'm going to do is cheat, like I did with the other one. Well, it's not really a cheat. If you've got the tools, use them, you know. That's the way I look at it. And I put that really fine belt on again. And I'm just going to gently run that around keeping it cool, although it doesn't really matter because we haven't hardened it yet, but I don't want to blow it up so I can't see very well what I'm doing. I'm keeping a close eye on the, the thickness all the way around. You want to try and keep a nice even thickness. And if you're doing it like this, you can quite easily um, see where it's a little bit thicker, a little bit too thin, and just compensate on the grinder. Just keep checking it, do a little bit, check it, and then the final bit, I'm just taking a little tiny radius off the end, so it's not quite so sharp. If it'll focus, you might be able to see it. So I've done, oh come on, focus, you blaming thing. Alright, there you go, alright. So you can see that's that's basically it. Nice long taper there, got plenty of strength in there. So, let's warm her up and quench it. Now that's up to critical temperature, it's non-magnetic, that's my magnet on the side there. Into the oil, keep it moving in the oil because if you keep it still, the oil around the piece will heat up and you won't be cooling it. So just keep it moving round and round. Drip dry for a second or two. Give it a wipe off. And now I'm just going to quickly give it a, a wire brush to take the scale off that I spoke about in the last video that comes out of that oil. Because it's old engine oil, you get all the carbon and muck and all sorts, and it just attaches itself to the steel. So I'm just getting that off. Alright, 
So we're ready to rub it down with a bit of paper. Again, like I did with the other one. Just so you've got a nice shiny bit, so you can see the colours running down. That's all you need it for. And I'm going to do this the same way as I did the last one with the blowtorch, just with a map gas, holding it in a pair of grips by the hitty end. And I'm just going to gradually heat it from the top and chase the colours down. And you'll see, and I'll sped it up a little bit. And you can see the colours coming down from the top. Nicely coming down. That is the colour I'm looking for, that pale blue. I want to chase that right down to the end. Nearly there. It's not quite going to reach. Come on, a little bit more. Come on, nearly there. I'm surprised actually it's not running faster down there because it's thinner. But it's not, so I'm having to give it a bit of extra heat. Now there we go. Straight in the water to stop it dead. Let's give it a, a look. You can still see the colours there. Got the blue, light blue at the end. And I'm a bit concerned about that colour up there, the browny purpley. I might be a bit brittle up there, but we'll see. Giving it the anvil test. And that hasn't broken so far. So let's warm up a bit of metal and give it a go. Same bit that I used for the eyes. And there you go. Punch away to your heart's content. Well, that's five in one go without quenching, and it hasn't touched it at all. So I'd say that's another another success. I'm going to say you can use it for all sorts of things: decoration, eyes, nostrils, eyebrows, noses, mouths, whatever you can put your imagination to. It's uh, a useful little tool. There you go, you can see it's fairly thick. You could probably put a, a really very, very shallow bevel on the end there to make it a little bit thinner, uh, which would allow you to make a thinner mark without it collapsing on itself. But if you put a, if you make it much thinner all the way up, it could well collapse when you're using it. So, I hope that's useful to somebody. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.